He was killed on a very busy street, and to this day, nobody knows who did it. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Ryan Livingston. Viewer discretion is advised. It was July 13th, 2006 in Carbondale, Illinois. 911 receives a phone call at 10.38 p.m. from a man who says that his brother just called him and said he was attacked on the street. The man's brother was named Ryan Livingston. When he spoke to his brother on the phone just minutes before this 911 call, Ryan was pleading for his life. He had just been beaten and stabbed by two men. But Ryan was in such distress, so much pain, that he could not describe exactly where he was to his brother. So when his brother calls 911 to report this, police are having a hard time finding him. It takes about 15 minutes for them to locate Ryan on the street. They found him lying in front of a building on 317 West Walnut Street, where literally just a moment or two before police arrived, they also get another 911 call from someone who was walking by across the street who saw this. So Ryan was finally found and he was rushed to the nearest hospital. Ryan had been stabbed numerous times. And at the hospital, Ryan kept slipping in and out of consciousness. But there was a point where he was conscious and able to tell police some things about his attacker, or attackers, as it were. He said that this was two black males. One of them had lighter complexion, and one of them was wearing a baseball hat that was turned backwards. Ryan had told police that he had never seen these two men before. He wasn't acquainted with them. This was pretty much a robbery that ended up in a stabbing because Ryan wasn't being totally cooperative with his robbers. Unfortunately, one of the stab wounds that Ryan suffered pierced his heart. And unfortunately, on the morning of Friday, July 14th at 1.51 a.m., Ryan Livingston would pass away from his wounds. Ryan Livingston was born on October 29th, 1983. He was the second child of three total children. Ryan was described as delightfully mischievous. He was someone who always tried to have fun in any situation, but also could remain serious when needed to. They said at times Ryan could be downright hilarious. He was someone who had always just had a big group of friends. Growing up, he was really artistic and he loved to paint pictures and portraits and whatnot and that seemed to kind of carry on into his older years and he had like this heart of gold it sounded like i mean they they said it you know at times he ran into some issues with getting into trouble but nothing like super major and like i said earlier they described him as being kind of mischievous but there was a story that someone told after his death that ryan was just sort of out and about somewhere when someone was driving a truck and unfortunately like wind caught something and a whole bunch of papers flew out of this guy's truck and they're all over the place but Ryan stopped whatever he was doing because he saw this happen and he helped collect every single piece of paper to get back to this man who had lost them and a lot of people say that at his core that is exactly who Ryan was he was also described as an old soul uh, he loved to listen to music from the 70s the 80s he was super fascinated with the v Vietnam War he actually befriended a Vietnam War vet he was just like curious about a lot of things and he would always just be learning new things things. On January 16th, 2004, Ryan became a father. He loved his daughter pretty much more than anything on the planet. He was a good dad. Even if it was only for a short time, he was always just a really wonderful dad. But his daughter, Hannah, was only two and a half years old when he was murdered. But unfortunately, when it comes to his actual murder, there really just isn't a lot known about it. Police have received tips. They have gotten pieces of information here and there. I know they've checked like CCTV. They've checked all of that out. They've questioned people that Ryan was hanging out with that night. They questioned people in the neighborhood and across the streets from where this actual attack took place. And while they have vague descriptions of the attackers, even from Ryan himself, he couldn't really give super detailed descriptions obviously given his state and they don't really even have composite drawings of the 
these two men. They did kind of look back into what he was doing that night. Uh, July 13th, 2006, he was attending a Sunset concert. And I guess this was taking place at the Shyrock Auditorium. At about 9 p.m. after this concert was over, Ryan got a ride to a friend's house, which was really close by. The friend lived on East Park Street. He was at this friend's house for roughly 20, maybe 30 minutes, according to the friend. And then Ryan left the friend's house on foot, and he said he was then going to be walking towards his brother's house. And so he was walking along Oakland Avenue. Some point between 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m., he's now around the 300 block of West Walnut street and he's walking along a sidewalk and according to what little information they know these two men had just sort of casually approached ryan and then it led to this attempted robbery where he attempted to resist and then you know the rest but because of the lack of witnesses because of the lack of like a murder weapon and there was no additional dna found at the scene there wasn't anything to like process fingerprints on, there was nothing. All they really have is the description Ryan gave of his attackers, and that's pretty much it. There is very scarce information, unfortunately, about the investigation and where they're at or what they have. It honestly doesn't sound like they have much at all. And, and even with today's technology, with cameras being like everywhere, there was nothing. Like, how do you solve that? How do you find out who these two people are? So really, it sounds like they're probably just hoping against all hope that these two guys, whoever they may be, bragged about this, told some friends about it, told acquaintances, maybe spilled the beans when they were drunk one night at the party, something. And which means that somebody somewhere out there has to know the truth because they may have told you. If you have information about this case, you can report anything anonymously. You do not have to say who you are or how you're connected to the individuals, but you just have to say what you know to help point police in the right direction because his family deserves their justice. He had a two and a half year old daughter who's now a teenager who is growing up without her dad, did not get to be raised by her father. This really sounds like wonderful guy who would give the shirt off his back to help you. He was just brutally killed randomly by two random people because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and his killers are still out there. So if you have any information about the murder of Ryan Livingston, please contact the police in Carbondale, Illinois at 618-457-3200. Again, you can report your information anonymously. You do not have to say who you are. All you have to do is tell them what you know. Ryan Livingston, his daughter, and the rest of his family deserve the answers. And these are two killers who should be behind bars, who should not be out there free to potentially hurt or kill somebody else. And if you know who they are, you can put a stop to them. And you can help Ryan, his daughter, and his family get the justice they all very rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case, True Crime, a Rooney, a Dooney, a Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you are into true crime. Give this video a like because the likes mean more people see it. So the more people that see it, maybe just that one right person does see it and can report their information to police and help solve this case. Also, I tell short form true crime stories over on a couple different TikTok pages. Please feel free to follow both of them if you want to. The links will pop up here at some point in the beginning and at the end of the video. They're also in the link tree in the description of this video below. You'll also find my merch store in that link tree below. We have like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff and we do ship all over this entire planet. So feel free to check it out. And lastly, if there is a case you want me to cover, just send me a super duper quick email. My email is listed below as well. All I need to know from you is the name of the person or the case where it happened and when it happened. I'll then add it to my list. The list is gigantinormous right now. Uh, so I pick my cases that I cover each time at random. I cannot promise you when I will cover that case, but I will get to it eventually. You can also see the list. It's public. It's listed in the link tree below. And for the most part, it's in alphabetical order. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. Okay. You got it, Mike. Uh -huh. What? Mike!
Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was super aggressive and loud. I apologize for that. Did I make you, did I make you, did I make you scream and scared? Anyway, shut up, Mike. That is the end of this video, is what this is. So... <laughs> gotcha <laughs> sorry about that anyway until the next <laughs> until the next story case cha cha for now true crime a rooney scrapey yep okay bye <clears throat> bye